Thanks for inviting me today. My name is Lena, and I am going to start this interview panel session with the definition of defective pricing. Then, I will answer one question from each of the six panelists. Defective pricing is any contracting action subject to the Truth in Negotiations Act, where the negotiated contract price, including profit or fee, was increased by a significant amount because the contractor or a subcontractor, at any tier, furnished cost or pricing data that were not complete, accurate, and current, as certified in the contractor's certificate of current cost or pricing data. When defective pricing occurs, the government is entitled to a price reduction to eliminate any significant overpricing related to the defective data. That reduction must consider increases in both cost and profit, or fee, related to the defective data. For fixed price incentive firm target contracts, the ceiling will also be adjusted downward. In addition to a price adjustment, the government is also entitled to interest on any overpayments that resulted from the defective pricing of supplies or services accepted by the government. In the case of a contractor that knew they were submitting cost or pricing data that were incomplete, inaccurate, or not current, does the government have any other entitlements? That is a great question. Yes. In the case where a contractor knowingly submitted cost or pricing data that were incomplete, inaccurate, or not current, the government is also entitled to a penalty equal to the amount of any overpayment. The contractual vehicle for implementing TINA is the Price Reduction for Defective Certified Cost or Pricing Data Clause and the Price Reduction for Defective Certified Cost or Pricing Data Modifications Clause. Is defective pricing fraud? Another great question. Thank you for asking. While a defective pricing claim isn't automatically a fraud claim, sometimes a defective pricing claim can rise to the level of fraud. Most defective pricing claims are the result of an accidental non-disclosure. I have heard the term good faith when folks in the office talk about defective pricing. What does this mean? In good faith, a contractor may not have known they had certain cost or pricing data and didn't disclose it to the government. Or, the contractor may not have believed the data met the definition of cost or pricing data. It may even be the case that the contractor knew they had the data and intended to disclose it to the government, but during the negotiation process failed to do so. What is a knowing, non-disclosure? When a contractor willfully and deliberately chooses not to disclose cost or pricing data that is reasonably available to them, the non-disclosure may rise to a knowing non-disclosure. The knowing non-disclosure could also rise to the level of a false claim or a fraud case. A knowing non-disclosure is a much more serious violation than an accidental non-disclosure. Whereas, a defective pricing claim requires a contractual remedy, a fraud claim requires a legal remedy. Contracting officers are empowered to resolve and disposition defective pricing findings through application of contract remedies, but are not empowered to represent the government in assertions of fraud. Can you give us some examples of potential fraud indicators, please? I am glad you asked. I prepared this chart for you using the Department of Defense, Office of the Inspector General's Fraud Detection Resources. It is a good resource for you also. What should we do, if we suspect fraud? First and foremost, ask for help. You can ask your supervisor, legal counsel, a fraud attorney, or even the Office of Special Investigations. There is no punishment if you don't find any fraudulent activity. In fact, we're thrilled when we don't have fraud findings, because it means that the government, and our partners in industry, are complying with the law. That's good news. It is not a contracting officer, buyer, or program manager's job to find fraud. However, we do have a regulatory responsibility to report irregularities or concerns. It is the job of our counterparts, in legal and investigative communities, to help us analyze information and determine whether fraud exists. Likewise, a contractor is required to report credible evidence of fraud, or they can be debarred. As prescribed in the FAR, Contractor Code of Business Ethics and Conduct identifies the contractor's duty to report. Spend a few minutes familiarizing yourself with the contents of FAR Part 3. We all need to do our part to help prevent and report fraud.
There is no career harm in referring a matter for review, or investigation, and having someone determine that there was no fraud. However, when we don't do our part to refer matters of concern, we may inadvertently allow a contractor to continue engaging in fraudulent behavior. When in doubt, ask for help.